Hello and welcome to the Horticulturalists. I hope you enjoy what we've got for you today. And if you aren't already there, please subscribe and like. And you can also press the alert button so that you are aware of the next video coming up. You can, and you would want to be because today, Mr. Ryan, oh, yes. oh, we're going to be, we're going into dangerous territory. Yes, and that's something I enjoy doing, <laughs> horticulturally speaking. Is it now? Now, I, I've been aware since I've known you of your penchant, shall we say, for something that is not highly regarded by many people. Yes. Stephen. It's, it's a genus of plants. Tell that, the people about your obsession. Oxalis. <gasps> yes, yeah, see? As soon as you mention that word, people assume that you're giving them a vial of bubonic plague, or at least <laughs> the reaction is much the same. And it's a genus of plants that people should revisit. Yep. There are weedy ones, yes. yes. But then there are weedy plants in many other genera in the world. We need to just have a fresh look at Oxalis. I mean, it's a genus of some 580 odd species. It's cosmopolitan, the genus, so there's plants of it growing in virtually every country and part of a the world. A cosmopolitan genus. It is definitely a cosmopolitan <laughs> Speaks genus. Speaks Latin, French. Yeah, yeah, we also have native ones. So, you know, even the nativophiles, there are oxaluses that you could grow. Uh huh. Unfortunately, most of ours aren't overly showy, but one of them's on the endangered species list, so that makes it worth growing. Okay, let's, well, let's start from the beginning. Yes. Viewers, we are sitting on this rocky knoll because yep. it happens to be Stephen's, what are you calling it? Ox Oxalarium. Oxalarium. So <laughs> It's a term I've coined. Hence, I have to have a hat to keep the sun off me because yeah. the Oxalarium is uh, sunny it's, bright. It's sunny in the winter when most of my South African Oxaluses are doing their thing. Yeah. In the summer, because the sun will be more overhead, it tends to have shade from the large trees growing behind it. Yeah. And the trees themselves keep the bulbs nice and dry. So uh -huh. I don't water this garden at all during the summer. Yeah. It just sits here with a few drought tolerant succulents in it to keep it looking interesting for the summer. Yeah. And then come autumn, the oxaluses start erupting and they will entertain me right through until the spring. What we might do is we might just look at all of the species that you've got here and go through them one by one. What a good idea. Give people the idea that they aren't all nasty little weeds. No. Oxalis herter is one of the more commonly available species in the trade. It has longish stems, it has beautiful big flowers on it, and it comes in a variety of different coloured forms. This one is the salmon pink form of its species, and next to my leg here I've got the wild form, which is a lovely mauve colour, and over there I've got the bright pink form. So I've got three different colours all growing in this area together. And one thing to know about this particular oxalis is that when it's dying down in the spring, it actually goes autumnal coloured, which is sort of weird. So the foliage will go oranges and yellows and things before the plant dies down, giving you yet another uh, added bonus. And this one also makes a nice neat clump. It doesn't run around. This is Oxalis melanosticta, one of the South African species. Makes a lovely mat of silver grey foliage, which is rather beautiful. Uh, and then it gets these bright golden yellow flowers, which it produces in the, mainly in the autumn period. Funnily enough, this plant grows well in the garden and flowers generally quite prolifically in the ground. But in a pot, you'll end up with a pot full of leaves. It very rarely ever flowers in a pot. So that's Oxalis melanosticta. Possibly one of the showiest and most popular of the species Oxaluses that I grow is this other South African species called Oxalis Masoniana. It's a wonderful bright orange and its needle-like foliage is completely un -oxalis like if such a word exists. I think it's a charmer and it makes nice neat clumps, it doesn't run. This little charmer is actually a hybrid Oxalis that showed up in my own garden. I think it's a cross between one of the forms of Oxalis flavour and unfortunately Oxalis polyphylla subspecies heptophylla. So it's quite a mouthful of its parentage, that's for sure. It's a lovely mauve, it gets very pretty long narrow leaflets, and I've called it Craig Lidgewood after my partner, much to his annoyance. This is Oxalis palmifrons. It has lovely white flowers before the foliage, although that's not the main game and it rarely flowers in a pot, so it needs to be in the garden if you're going to get the white flowers. But the leaves are what it's all about. These beautiful furry leaves, at the moment covered in dewdrops, have exactly the shape of a fan palm, hence the name palmifrons, very appropriate. Makes a lovely ground cover in a sunny rock garden, well worth growing as a pot plant. And if you have an individual bulb in a pot, like this one I prepared earlier, it can form a wonderful symmetry with the leaves. So it is a beautiful plant, well worth growing. And if you don't tell somebody it's an oxalis, 
They'll never know. Aren't they beautiful? I wonder if we've convinced people that oxalis aren't the devil's work. Uh, have you convinced people? I don't know whether I have. In fact, I spent 20 minutes once com explaining this whole thing to a lady who then put the oxalis back on the bench and I lost a whole $5.50 oh, sale. So, the wheels of commerce did not turn that day. No, and some people you just won't convince and that's fine. I yes. mean, if you just don't want to be convinced of the beauty of these plants, that is your problem. I find <laughs> your passion is charming about these. <laughs> so let's cover some basics then. First, the reputation for spreading and becoming a weed. It's very well founded with a very small number of oxalis. And what's the one in Australia that you see everywhere, the oh, yellow one? The yellow one is oxalis pest capri. Pest capri. Yeah, not pest capri, but pest capri. <laughs> Although the name sort of sounds like it's appropriate. And it's commonly known for some bizarre reason as the Bermuda buttercup as well, which is one of its common names. It's is a it South from? African. No, it's, it's not, not from Bermuda. No, no. <laughs> no. Nor are half the plants that have common names that have a place in them for some uh -huh. reason or another. It probably went weedy in Bermuda and that's where it first sort of raised its ugly head, so to speak. So it's South African. Yeah. How did it come here? Like all of the other oxaluses, it will have come into Australia as a lovely little bulb that's going to be really pretty in our garden. Ah. And it liked the place so much that it's become one of our major weed species. It has. Having said that, there's something people should be aware of. The South African, um, winter growing oxaluses do in fact grow through the winter months when virtually everything else is dormant. Yeah. So they don't actually compete with the other plants they're growing with in a garden to any great extent. I have to say I have a sort of Oh, a sort of a, a bit grudging of, respect. Yeah, I do. That's exactly the words I was looking for. I have a grudging respect for Oxalis pescapri, and it's because it's a survivor. Oh, and, and it is. I mean, it's and it's, a colonizer. It it tends not to sell seed madly, but the bulbs multiply like mad. Ah, now so that that's... does re raise another issue. Yeah, the weedy ones don't try and dig them out of your garden because if you dig them out, all you tend to do is spread the bulbs. So you've either got to keep the uh, light from them by smothering them under an impervious layer for a long time. Yeah. If you are going to use poisons, and we don't necessarily recommend that, but nope. if you are going to use poisons, use them when they're in full flower. Yeah. It will have a much better kill rate because the oxaluses that are winter growing bulbous ones produce new bulbs after they've expended the nutrients from the old bulbs on flowering. Uh, on flowering. Right. So if you hit them at full flowering, you will in fact have a much better kill rate than if you do it at either end of the growing season. But what we're going to suggest is you smother them to death. Yes, so smothering <laughs> them is probably a good way to go. You know, a layer of something impervious unfortunately like plastic but you may have to redo the whole thing at least two or three times so you'd have to keep the light and uh, things from them for at least a couple of growing seasons to so have probably a real impact. plastic sheeting yeah is probably if you haven't go. got a huge amount of it we've alluded to the fact that there are two main groups South yeah. American and then the Mediterranean well not the Mediterranean the Mediterranean climate South Africans oh right 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 yeah. so there's no None that are in, uh, native to Europe or the Mediterranean. Oh, yes, there are a few, but they're more woodland type oxaluses. Right. And the same with most of the North American ones, they tend to be woodland plants. In fact, they call them wood sorrels. So basically, it's everywhere on every continent apart from Antarctica. Yep, yep. They are quite literally cosmopolitan. I mean, Australia's only got a handful of little tiny evergreen herby type ones. South America's got a huge number. South Africa's got a vast number. Uh, and so they're the two main epicenters of the genus. And that's where the biggest diversity uh, shows up in the genus. Ta-da! What have I prepared earlier? But this one. This one is Oxalis triangularis. Now it's one of the South American ones. Yeah. And the South American ones uh, react in quite a different way to the South African ones. Yeah. The African ones are mainly bulbous. Yeah. The South American ones tend to have rhizomes, uh, or in fact can be quite succulent, so they're, they're dwarf shrubs. It comes from the hills above Rio de Janeiro. Really? Uh, and it has become a, an indoor plant par excellence. It has, but um, <laughs> it's the colour. It has the most extraordinary leaves. Now, here's the thing. Why have my leaves just closed up on us? Yeah, well, the... It, it's sort of odd that it's doing that because it's actually quite sunny where we are. And normally the leaves close up at night, which is one of the interesting quirky features of this particular oxalis. Yeah. It has rather attractive little mauve flowers on it, but it is very, very uh, aligned to light or lack of. So yeah. normally it will close at night and open during the day. Yours has decided that this sun's all a bit much really. No, actually, <laughs> secret it may have been in the car yeah well that might have done it yeah <laughs> so in terms of care then so this is a very very fashionable and popular pot plant specimen because it's got great color yep. and great flowers 
Where can you grow this? Well, it can be grown outdoors, but funnily enough, if it gets water on the foliage on a regular basis, it tends to get a rather nasty rust disease. Ah. And so it's actually better as an indoor pot plant ah. because you can water it ground level and you don't have to get the foliage damp. Right. And so that's how I would recommend growing triangularis and one of the two of its close relatives from South America. Yeah. And they tend to be more summer-oriented oxaluses as well. Yeah. They often go into a dormancy when the weather gets cold in the winter, so they have the reverse cycle to what the Mediterranean-style South African ones do because they have a dry, hot summer, so they go dormant at that time. Aha, fascinating. Okay, well, we have another exhibit. Yes, which exhibit is, B, perhaps? Exhibit B, which is this beauty. Yes, Peduncularis. Now, this is another South American one yep. from Bolivia and that sort of part of South America. Yeah. And it's actually a succulent variety, so it's a shrubby one. Yeah. Again, it's probably better as a pot plant. I can't grow it in our slightly frosty climate of Mount Macedon, so yeah. I don't bother with any of the shrubby oxaluses because I'd have to grow them as indoor plants. Yeah. But in suburban Melbourne, they make a nice indoor plant. They'd also make a good pot plant out on a veranda or patio or what have you. You could even grow them probably in the garden, and they're not going to self-seed themselves like there's no tomorrow. Right, so this is not a spreader. But um, it's a really handsome plant with really beautiful flowers, which I imagine are quite unusual, the, yep. this stem with the cluster of flowers at the top for oxalis. It's not completely rare. There are a number of oxaluses that do have clustered flowers, yep. some of them more so than others, and there's plenty that have individual flowers that come up from the bulb or the base. Yep. And that's one of the things about them. I mean, the bulbous ones particularly, if you think about it, if you plant a daffodil or a tulip, their foliage is going to be much the same for every species. There's yeah. not a lot of diversity in them. Flower shape will be somewhat the same with most of them. Yeah. And the vast majority of them, you're lucky if you get more than a week to a fortnight out of them as far as colour in the garden's concerned. Yeah. The ornamental oxaluses, some of the shrubby ones flower virtually year round. Yeah. The South African bulbous ones, you'll generally get at least two months of flowers out of them. And then you have the beautiful leaves as well. Right. And that can hang around till the spring. Yeah. And of course, the ones like triangularis, they can have foliage on all year round, which is exquisitely beautiful and they can flower almost non-stop. Yeah, which, so, which mine does. Now, I'm intrigued then. So you're calling this a shrubby succulent type. Yeah. How, what's the largest oxalis? Ah, Gigantea. No. <laughs> yes. Oxalis gigantea is a deciduous, woody, succulent shrub wow. uh, that can grow up to around about two to three metres tall. Yep. Uh, it has huge bright yellow flowers on it. Generally, when the plant is a bare, sticky thing. Yep. And I've seen that flowering in the wild, and it is quite something. Uh, again, it's, it's from the desert areas. I saw it growing in the desert, sort of getting up towards sort of central northern Chile, and just the most remarkable looking plant and so unoxalis like that you know you just can't help but go wow that would be a lovely thing to add to my succulent collection as opposed to my oxalis one there you go is it available have you ever come across i it? haven't seen it in australia although i'd be really surprised if it's not here somewhere in some of the succulent growers collections ah interesting mm. okay well two questions then firstly we've seen um the south american examples that i've got so yeah. Are all of them, regardless of where, well, let's focus on the South African ones that you've got here. Can they all be grown in pots as well? Oh yeah, virtually any oxalis will make a good pot plant. Yeah. And in fact, the South African bulbous ones can be left in the same pot for some years and they can become incredibly congested with bulbs. Yeah. And as long as you give them a little light feed with a slow release fertilizer as they're coming up in the autumn, they will in fact flower prolifically when they're really tight in the pot. So you don't have to repot them annually or even biennially yeah. they can just stay in the same size pot for donkey's years you can just keep rewatering them when they come up and give them a little feed and as you pointed out you get a longer flowering season than you would tulips daffodils almost narcissus. any other bulb i can think of wow. in fact the only other group of bulbs that probably come close would have to be the cyclamen because they have a good long flowering period and yeah. they also have attractive foliage. Another passion of yours. Yes, another passion of mine. <laughs> I'm seeing a theme here. <laughs> yeah, you, you are. <laughs> Those of our views, not in Mediterranean type climates. What are the hardiness then? Well, you mentioned there are some North American and some European woodland species, yeah. but what about the Mediterranean climate types? All right, the ones from South Africa and other Mediterranean type climates are probably best pot grown. Yeah. Uh, and most people, because they tend to be winter flowering yeah. and they're not gonna cope well with the winter, say in England or northern parts of North America, they would be kept as pot plants and you'd probably keep them in a cool greenhouse or you'd bring them inside when they're in flower and yeah. enjoy them as an indoor plant. Yeah. But then you'd dry them off outside in the summer. So 
in terms of their watering and propensity to rot, like many bulbs, so these are all autumn winter flowers, mm -hmm. so they need a dry summer. So the, the pot needs to be kept dry yep. in summer. The shed. Is the possibly, shed is possibly where you might keep them for the under summer. the dining table outside yes okay so that's how you would look after them in a colder climate well there we are viewers are you convinced that the oxalis is the way of the future has stephen ryan convinced you i have to say it is becoming a thing it is, well this is becoming a thing yeah well that certainly is yes yeah, they're, they're paying silly prices for it on ebay and it's become quite a collectible and i think it's actually leading people on to the other oxalises i mean i don't spend anywhere near as much time trying to convince people how good they are nowadays so the tide is turning it is turning and there are people out there that are mad collectors like you yes and there are facebook pages for Planet Oxalis, Oxalis Australia, Oxalis Mad. There are whole Facebook groups out there that do nothing but talk about Oxalis. So well, there you go. There you go. How amazing. Well, thank you for sharing your passion and insight. We do post every week, so do hit subscribe if you're interested in more tales of daring do from the rare plant world. Mr. Ryan, what could we do next week? I, well, who knows? We might do something practical. Ooh. That's always possible. Pros we, of course, can always engage with a new plant. We so, can. Yeah. Well, here's to a future engagement. Yes. <laughs> we'll see you next week. All right. Bye, all.